So let's say that you just headed to the tackle shop or the sporting goods store to pick up your first bait casting fishing reel. And you're looking at the back of the box and you're saying 11 ball bearings, 10 plus one, 5.6, 33 inch, max 20 pound. This stuff can get confusing. As a sport, fishing can be confusing enough. So why the heck is there so much confusing jargon, words, and numbers on the back of a fishing reel box? Well, all of it is important, but one of the things that is most important, far above the number of ball bearings, uh, the, the weight of the reel, the max pound drag it has, is the gear ratio. The gear ratio will affect not only how many casts you can get in per day, but exactly how your lure is retrieved in the water, all of which can help you or hurt you in your pursuit of catching more bass. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the topic of gear ratios. What the heck do they mean for you and for me? My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys catch more bass. I don't care if you're in Spain, Brazil, California, or Florida, there are things you can learn here on this channel as a part of this learning community to help you catch more bass and bigger bass. So if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, hit the subscribe button. We are trying to grow to 200,000 subscribers. By the time this video comes out, we're gonna be awful close. And so I, I thank you guys so much for the support. It means so much to me to have uh, an, an audience like this that wants to learn and grow as bass anglers. I love making videos that can help specific things you guys need on your bodies of water. And so please let me know in the comment section what type of videos y'all want to see. But I say we talk about gear ratios. Now on the back of the box that your baitcaster comes in, as well as at least on mo most baitcasters, right along the side of the handle or next to the uh, the drag control uh, star knob is going to be your gear ratio. Now the gear ratio is usually right represented by three numbers, a singular number, a period, the second number, colon, and then a last number. So here on this reel, very standard gear ratio for nowadays, we have a 6.8 to one. Now what do those three numbers mean? Well, the first two are actually combined, just like any other number with a decimal is technically one number. This here is a 6.8 colon, to one. Now every single bait casting reel, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen one that's different, has one as the third number in that string of numbers. That is because it just basically means this is one revolution. One time that your reel handle turns completely in a, th in a, in a 360 degree turn is going to be matched by how many times that spool turns in that one revolution. So this, this reel here, the spool turns 6.8 times every time your handle makes one full revolution. So it's pretty dang easy to understand. This reel right here is an 8.3 to one. So the spool rotates 8.3 times every single time uh, you rotate the handle one time. Now in this video, I'm talking about bass fishing bait casting reels specifically. I'm sure in saltwater you could find either slower gear ratios or faster gear ratios, but most bass fishing reels nowadays, I don't care if you're talking any brand out there, I mean, I'm sponsored by Lou, so I'm gonna talk about Lou's today, but any bait casting brand out there is going to have reels in the five gear ratios all the way up to, I think a few brands out there have a few reels in the 10 gear ratios. But while we have two reels here that from the outside look almost identical, they do have two different gear ratios and not all gear ratios are created equal. Using the wrong gear ratio for a certain technique can definitely inhibit the amount of fish that you catch and can definitely wear down your body and your gear over time. Gear ratios are incredibly important to understand, especially when it comes to retrieving your lures. So let's talk about what the low speed gear ratios look like in terms of numbers and what those are most useful for. Now the low speed gear ratios, in my opinion, are from the fives to the low sixes. So anywhere from 5.1 one to one, 5.6 to one, 5.7 to one. I think Lou's has a five one to one uh, in the BB1 Pro. And then we have a ton in the sixes as well, but I'm gonna keep the low speed gear ratio reels into the lower sixes. So a 6.1 to one, uh, 6.3 to one. Once you get to the 6.4, which we'll talk about here in a second, that's when I kind of transition into my medium speed gear ratios. Now these low fives and sixes are usually good for baits that have a lot of tension and pull in the water. So I'm talking your big uh, vibrating jigs, big lipless crankbaits, and of course, your deep diving crankbaits. Those have a lot of pullback, and so you want to have a gear ratio that is low. 
Now, why is that? Much like when you are riding a mountain bike or a road bike and you gear down to climb up a hill, it makes it a little bit easier for your feet to kind of pedal like this and you get up the hill a little bit slower, much like the gear ratio on your reels with your crankbait is going to be a little bit slower of a retrieve, but you end up getting the job done with a lot less wear on your hands. I'm, I'm kind of leaving biking off to the side. A lot less wear on your hands when you're deep cranking as well as a lot less wear and tear onto the gears and the pinions and screws, everything that uh, comprises a bait casting reel. If you are just constantly reeling something super heavy, it's like trying to bike up a hill in a gear that is not supposed to be used to go up a hill. Your legs are going to be tired and much like in fishing, your hands are going to be tired. Now there is a situation in which you would use a low speed gear ratio reel for something other than deep cranking. I'm talking about uh, keeping a swim bait, a heavier spinner bait, any other uh, semi deep reaction baits you know, deeper in that water column in the strike zone for a longer period of time. If your reel is too fast, it's going to end up bringing your lure out of that strike zone higher up in the water column. But besides those very specific knee situations where those bass are deeper, maybe they're suspended, I don't really think that a, a lower speed gear ratio reel is going to be the best for your situation. I could be missing out. Of course, drop a comment below if you use lower speed gear ratio reels for anything other than what I described them as. But in my experience, that is exactly what these reels need to be used for. So now that we've talked about the low speed gear ratio, let's talk about what I call the all purpose gear ratios, anywhere from the mid sixes to the mid sevens. Now in my experience, this center category of gear ratios is going to fit under its umbrella, the majority of bass fishing techniques. So anywhere from spinnerbaits, crankbaits, vibrating jigs, uh, soft plastics, Texas rigs, jigs, you can throw them all in this in this category of gear ratio. Now, of course, like I said, deep crankbaits, uh, and we're going to talk about here in a second with the faster gear ratios, the frogs, the punching, the skipping docks, that's more of the high speed gear ratio. You can do everything inside of this general gear ratio, which is why I love it so much, and which is why I think that not only are they top sellers for companies, companies oftentimes will tell people, hey, the best one to get for your first bait caster is a 6-4 to 1 or a 6-8 to 1. It's just a really good all around gear ratio to be able to do anything with. So if you want to slow down and throw a crankbait a little bit slower, of course you can pivot and reel your lure a little bit slower. And if you also want to throw any sort of lures that usually would do better with a faster gear ratio, you can do that with this center category as well. I don't really have a whole lot else to say about this category besides the fact that it's just kind of all purpose. You can do whatever you want with it. There's still things that are going to be better as we've talked about and we'll talk about with certain gear ratios. But to say that you have to have a super fast gear ratio or a super slow to do things isn't true. I'm just explaining, you know, the purposes of why you'd want a super slow or a super fast. And so talking about super fast gear ratios, we're going to talk about the high speed gear ratio category, usually falling in the upper sevens to above. Now, when it comes to the high sevens and up, that is almost solely for me, a gear ratio used for extremely fast reaction baits, topwater frogs, and shallow cover fishing. So I'm talking, uh, you know, skipping docks, flipping bushes, punching, where you want to make a lot of fast, repetitive casts. We're going to do a challenge here at the end of the video comparing a normal speed gear ratio reel, the 6, 8 to 1, to an 8, 3 to 1, and show you guys in real time, in a challenge format, why you can get more casts per day in with a fast gear ratio reel, which in the long run, especially over a long tournament day, is going to result in more fish catches. Because the more flips that you can make into a bushy area, the more more skips that you can make into a dock, the more presentations you make, the more times that a fish will have a potential to see your lure and eat it, resulting in more fish catches. Now, I could spend a lot of time going into, you know, each specific lure and technique, which gear ratio is best for that. I feel like I've kind of covered that, you know, all purpose, reaction baits, Texas rigs, everything kind of fit in that, in that, in that center category, the, the sixes to sevens, then the fives to sixes is going to be your deep crankbaits and anything you want to keep in the strike zone for a long time, usually in deeper water and then the lures and techniques that you want to make a ton of repetitive casts throughout the day you're punching you're flipping skipping you know fishing shallow water that's going to be your fast gear ratio reels and so like i said we're going to do a challenge here for the next few minutes we're going to compare the uh the exact same reel this here is a lose uh, custom pro speed spool the brand new one that just launched with the new p2 pinion system uh, we're going to put the exact same fluorocarbon line on each one to the exact same level we're going to put them on the exact same rod with the exact same bait and of course have the reels set up in the exact same ways. We're gonna put two minutes on the clock and see how many casts we can make from the boat to the shore with each one of these reels to show you guys in real time why gear ratio matters. So I'll top on the front deck and get this challenge started.
So let the challenge begin. We have the exact same reel, the Lewis Custom Pro Speed Spool with a 7.2 medium action rod, 17 pound Seaguar Invisex fluorocarbon, and then the exact same size, not the same color, I only had uh, one of each color, but uh, the exact same size Outcast Tackle Swim Jig with the exact same size Strike King Rage Menace Trailer. And we've got both reels set up the exact same way. Brakes are on five and a half. External brakes, oh, I was wrong. Didn't finish this one. Now the brakes are on five and a half. <laughs> we've got the spool tension knob set to the exactly the same speed of the lures falling down and i do have the drag set exactly the same on both of them i don't really think drag is going to have a difference in this but i also like i said have them spooled up the exact same amount one thing that i did not mention in my sit down portion is that when you don't have your reel spooled up almost all the way full if not all the way full your gear ratio is not actually going to work in the way that it was designed to because you don't have the proper amount of line on your reels so i used to do this all the time i understand if you all do too if you don't have your reels all the way spooled up your gear ratio is not going to be correct. But we're going to start this challenge, put two minutes on the clock, and we're going to do the six eight to one bait caster first, and then compare it with how many casts we can get in two minutes with the eight three to one, showing what it would look like to fish these two reels in a shallow cover situation. We're talking about skipping docks, punching, that type of thing where you want to make a lot of presentations in a shorter amount of time, and thus making more casts over a long fishing day. So we're going to see how these two react over just a two minute period. So we've got Levi the cameraman over over there on the shore. He's going to get that angle. We have the chest mount going right here and you guys in the back. Now, of course, I can't make the exact same length cast every single time, but this is just going to be the distance that I shoot for. If I end up making a bunch of errant casts all over the place, we'll start the timer over. But I say we get started with the six, eight to one gear ratio reel. So you tell me when we're starting, Levi. All right, ready? Yep. Set, go. All right, that was kind of bad, but we'll count it. One, two, you know what? We're actually gonna go for that location right there. Two, three, four. And I'm going as fast as I can, y'all. Five. Six. My hand is gonna be a lot more tired than I thought it would. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. How are we at? 10, 11. This is harder than I thought it would be. 12. 13. 14. Sixteen. Can I get one more in? I have to get it fully back in. Eighteen. Yes. Can I get eighteen? Ah. All right. I got seventeen. That was way harder than I was expecting it to be. The first five casts I was doing fine, by the last 10, my arm was just killing me. I definitely slowed down a little bit, but we got 17, at least that I counted correctly, 17 casts in a two minute time period uh, from, of course, casting and getting it back in the boat with the six, eight to one gear ratio. So we're gonna stretch my hand, drink some water, give it a little bit of a rest, wait a few minutes, and then try the eight, three to one gear ratio and see, I mean, I'm guessing. I love doing challenges and surprising myself, but I'm guessing that I'm gonna get even more uh, cast in per two minutes on the faster gear ratio. Okay, folks, we are back after a few minutes rest. Had a half of my sandwich for lunch. I am fully energized. My arm does feel a little more tired, so uh, we are doing the faster gear ratio. Hopefully it'll make up for the fact that my arm is a little more tired. And 
I feel like we're gonna get even more casts than I think we will. So hopefully I can prove to you guys why a fast gear ratio is important. So Levi, two minutes on the clock. Can I get a little countdown, Levi? All right, three, two, one. Go. One. It's now I'm going so fast I am glitching out. Two, three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Getting tired, folks. Seventeen. What are we at? Thirty seconds. 18, 19, 20, oh gosh, 5, 4, ah, I can't get another one, <laughs> oh man, my arm is so tired, I had to give up with a few seconds left because I realized I couldn't get a full cast in, but uh, I got 20 in two minutes, which might not seem like a whole lot more than 17, but considering I was tired, I could literally feel from the first cast my arm was already more tired from doing the first half of the challenge. So I just went to show you guys, in a two minute time period, I got three whole more casts in than I got with that lure right there. And over a long time period throughout the day, I know we're not making casts as quickly as I was making them, but you will make more presentations and get your lure in quicker after unproductive cast or a bad cast with a faster gear ratio reel than you will with a slower one. So I found exactly what I thought I was gonna find. I hope that I would destroy my record in the first one a little bit more, but my arm is killing me. Okay, folks, we are done. We are done talking about gear ratios. We are done making quick, short cast. My arm is killing me, but I hope that you guys learned something in today's video. Not all gear ratios are created equal and you will definitely get more casts in with a faster gear ratio, but you're also gonna work a little harder for those lures that have uh, more drag in the water, and that's why you use the lower speed gear ratio. And of course, if you did enjoy this video, hit that subscribe button. I'll have all the gear that I linked, that I used in this video, linked in the video description. Please purchase your tackle through those links. It helps me out a ton to make a living in this industry. And uh, I just love the fact that I get to do this for a living for you guys. I know I just said that. You know, it, it's, it's mind blowing that I get to make these types of fun, crazy challenge videos. My name's Tyler, and we'll see you guys next time on TRF. I'm gonna actually go catch a fish on these now.